Hi, I'm Mike Roberts, a Flexi4 sales engineer here at TechScan, and today we're going to do a calibration tutorial with our Flexi4 sensors. To do a calibration, you will need our Quick Start Calibration Guide, available on our website, a set of calibration weights, a multimeter to measure the resistance output of the sensor, and a material to use as a puck on the sensor, which you can punch out with a mechanics punch tool. And we will discuss the necessary reasons and the construction of the pucks later. We also recommend that you set up a spreadsheet using a program like Excel to chart your results. This spreadsheet plots the load applied from each of the four calibration weights and the resulting sensor resistance output at each load. You can also set up the spreadsheet to show the subsequent conductance calculations, conductance being the inverse resistance or 1 over resistance. It is important to calibrate the Flexi4 sensors due to part-to-part -part variation, variation in the environmental conditions, or also the interface materials or the materials that will actually be contacting the sensor will all affect how the sensor responds to a certain force. Whenever possible in your application, we recommend using a thin puck on top of the sensor. And what I mean by a puck is a shim or disc that ensures that all of the load is concentrated only on the sensing point and not on the dead area of plastic around the sensing area on the sensor. It is also important to condition the sensors before calibrating or using them, ideally every time that you use the sensors. By conditioning, what I mean is mechanically breaking in the sensor by applying 110% of your maximum measurement load or more. So if I take this weight and place it on the sensor for a few seconds at a time, remove and do this again, and do this three to five times to condition the sensor before calibrating. Now that the sensor has been conditioned, we are now ready to calibrate the sensor using our four test weights. To do this, you hook up the two leads from the multimeter to the two outer pins on the sensor and set the multimeter to measure resistance. First, uh, we'll start with the lowest load and place it on top of the puck, making sure to balance it so that it does not touch the table around the edges. Wait a few seconds to settle, and the resistance output is showing about 76 kilo ohms. Enter 76,000 into the spreadsheet, and that is our first data point. Now we'll place the 200 gram weight on the sensor, and make sure to balance it again. And let the reading settle. The output is about 44.5 kilo ohms. And I place the 500 gram weight on the puck, again making sure to balance it. Wait for the sensor to settle, and 15.7 kilo ohms. And now the one kilogram weight. And that gives us about 6.7 kilo ohms. And if you look at the graph of the blue points are resistance values and the red points are conductance, and which would be inverse resistance or one divided by resistance. And see here the relationship of conductance to force is very linear. 